So for 21, um, this one's talking about collecting nickels and quarters. Um, so far, they have 16 coins total. It's up to $2. So how many nickels and how many quarters do they have? Well, the first one, the first equation is the same equation as a lot of the other ones where you just take your variables and add them together. And that's equal to the total number of coins. If you take the number of quarters, the number of nickels, add those together, that's 16. I told you guys, but this um, is, I think, I've decided the easier way is to make everything the amount of cents, not dollars. So, for instance, a nickel is five cents, a quarter is 25 cents. If you do that, you have to remember that two dollars is 200 cents. That's one of the reasons I didn't use this method, um, is because a lot of people forget that. A lot of people um, will put 2.00 and it throws off their work. So once you have that, if you have to solve this, and that's the reason I do it that way, I guess I could start. Um, the other way to do it is to look at the uh, nickels and quarters as and that's fine. You just ends up being decimal. Um, and that's fine. It just ends up being decimals, which isn't really the end of the world. So nickels would be 0 0.05 nickels plus 0 0.25 quarters is equal to 2.00. The second way of doing it um, is nicer because you don't have to worry about making two dollars into two hundred cents. Um, but I like the first way to do it because you don't have debt. Um, if you are interested in that second way, by all means, let me know. We can go over it. Um, but I think I'm going to lean into this first way. To multiply the first equation by negative five, so that'll give us negative n. Minus 5q is equal to um, 16 times 5 is, I want to say 6, no, not 60, 80, maybe. Uh, uh, negative 80. The other question can change it all. 5n plus 25q is equal to 200. So those cancel. We end up with 20q is equal to negative 80 plus 200 is 120. Divide both sides by 20, 120. Um, so your Q is equal to six. So we have six quarters. Then plug that back in to find how many nickels you have. Well, if you have 16 coins total, if six of them are quarters, that means 10 of them have to be nickels. You could obviously do the math or you could think about it like that. Uh, and then lastly, I'm not gonna write it out and waste you guys this time, especially as you probably can't read it with my handwriting. But just a brief description would be that the, there are 10 nickels and six quarters. That's totally fine. You can say that. Whatever his name is, if you want to call him by name. Sammy has 10 quarters and six, uh, sorry. Sammy has six quarters and 10 nickels. So moving on to the three by three system. Now I will tell you, this is what I was trying to tell my other class. There have been problems that I've told you guys in the past that I say they're pretty difficult problems. And if you don't know how to do it, if you skip them on the test, you're not going to get an A, but you could still get like a B. This is not one of those times. These, this problem, this specific problem on the test is worth four points. So the way I started saying it is if you leave this blank, yes, it's definitely going to hurt. It's not going to be great for you. Don't leave it blank. However, if you've done 10 of these and you've never got the right answer, you'll be fine. Because even if you don't get the right answer, if you still have work where you know what you're doing, you just don't do it correctly, you'll get a bunch of partial credit. Because that's honestly the main reason to make it worth four points is so I can get partial credit as much as I can. So if you're getting an answer, even if it's wrong, um, yes, again, obviously, if you want to get an A+, plus, you're going to have to figure that out. Um, but if you're somebody that just wants to pass this class or just wants a C in this class, um, yeah, getting the right answer would be ideal, but as long as you can get a lot of your partial credit, I wouldn't worry, I wouldn't lose sleep over it. So, you do not have to do it this way, but we did it by labeling my equations first. So that was my A, B, and C. Now, when we cancel a variable, the first thing is we need to figure out which um, which letter or which variable to cancel. Now this one, um, you could actually cancel any of them, X, Y, or Z. I personally recommend finding a variable that doesn't have any number in front of it, which again, in our case, X, Y, and Z both have places. X is 
the Y, and the Zs, all those don't have numbers in front of them. So those are all ideal ones to use. If you want to cancel the Xs or Ys on the practice test, I added like two or three extra pages to show you how to cancel the Xs and the Ys first. Um, but also keep in mind, there's probably 10 or 15 different ways to solve this one. Um, and so if you did it differently and got the same answer, that's probably okay. You do not have to do it this way. And that's my step one. So step one, I take my A and my B and I add those together. So I have my A is X plus 2Y minus Z is equal to 5. My equation B is 3X minus Y plus is equal to negative 8. Now, the reason I picked those is because without multiplying by anything, I can cancel those Zs pretty easily. Now, again, if you want to cancel the Xs or the Ys and did it differently, that's fine, too. That's just the reason I chose the Zs. It doesn't make any difference. So, the Zs cancel. I end up with 4X plus Y is equal to 5 minus 8 is equal to 3. Now, again, I call that equation D. Now, again, you do not have to label anything, but I tell you what, if you miss one negative and that's the only thing you missed, that's going to make your answer be totally off. But if I can find where you missed that negative, I can give you partial credit. I'll make half a point off out of four. Pretty good. But if it's really sloppy and I cannot figure out where you missed your negative, that's all of a sudden where you're going to miss some more points. So I would recommend staying organized um, for both of our benefits. Step two, remember, the reason I always pick a variable in step one to solve for or to cancel, um, I always pick something without a number in front of it, because step two, you have to cancel the same variable. That's the biggest thing. We have to use equation C, and we have to cancel one of those, uh, we have to cancel the same variable. So we have to cancel Z in this one as well. So if I'm canceling the Z and I need to use equation C, I'm going to use B with that one. So it could be B and C. But B, I have to multiply by 2. So I put that 2 in front of there to remind us of that. So that's 6X minus 2Y plus 2Z is equal to negative 16. Then my equation C, I don't have to do anything with that one. X plus 3Y minus 2Z is equal to 7. And but the Z's cancel. You have 7X plus Y is equal to negative 16 plus 7 is negative 9. That's equation E. Now, again, I'm not saying this is easy by any means, but I think the reason it's hard is because it's such a long problem because we're not even done yet. We're about halfway there. But each step really isn't too bad. It's the same as using elimination before. You just have to make sure you're staying organized. So, my step three now, I'm going to D and E to get one of those variables to cancel. So, I'm going to uh, cancel my Y. I'm going to do that by negative 1. So, I'm going to have negative 1D, which is negative 4X minus Y is equal to positive 3. And my E, since I did it that way, I don't have to combine anything with my E. So I have 7x plus y is equal to negative 9. The so y cancel, we get 3z, I'm sorry, 3x is equal to 3 minus 9 is negative 6. And by 3, I get x is equal to negative 2. The other variable. So take that negative 2, plug it into either d or e, it doesn't make a difference. Um, so this is your step four. I'm going to plug that into my equation D. So I have D times, oh, sorry. Almost did that one wrong. So for my D, I have four times negative two, as we just found for X, plus Y is equal to negative three. Four times two is negative eight, plus Y is equal to negative three. If you add eight to both sides and you don't write things down incorrectly, you get positive 5. So now we have our X and our Y. We only have one more to find. That's our Z. That's what we canceled in the beginning. 
And so again, it doesn't matter which equation you use, whichever you think is going to be easiest, I'm going to pick equation B. And I'll zoom in here in a second. B, I have B times negative two minus Z is equal to negative eight. And now I need to solve that for Z. So it's negative six minus five plus Z times negative 11. And 11 to both sides. I get Z is equal to positive three. So we have negative two, positive five, and positive three. Again, I know I'm beating a dead horse, and I know these problems are long enough that even after I get done with just one problem, it seems like everyone's kind of over it. I understand that. But that's the hard part of these problems is that they're so long and there's so much work. Every step, step one, two, and three, aren't really too bad. Um, they're not easy by any means, but they're just as bad as any other elimination problem we've had. Um, you just have to make sure you're sticking with it. Try not to take shortcuts. So the other ones that I want to go over, number 23, make myself some room. Now, number 23 is nice because they start right here from our last one. Our last one, we got all the way to step three. We finished step three before we finally had one of their variables. Now they give us one of the variables. So that one variable they give us is y is equal to eight. So obviously, and I've done this before, I already know my y value is 8. So wherever my answer is, I can put 8 in there because they're telling us that. Well, once you have 8, you can plug that in to find out what your um, z is. So 3 times 8 plus 2z is equal to 16. 24 plus 2z is equal to 16. Subtract 24. 2z is equal to 24 is 8, negative 8, I hope. I get my z is negative 4, so I know my z value now. My y, my z, your x, you plug everything else into your last equation. So 2x, 8, 3 times negative 4 is equal to 6. 4 is negative 12. 8 minus 12 is negative 4. If you add 4 to both sides, you get 2x is equal to 10. If you divide both sides by 2, you get your x to be 5. Should be your answer for this other one. Now, again, 23 should not be, that's only 3 points. The other one's 4 points. On the test, 23 is only 3 points because um, it should go a little bit quicker, a little bit easier, take a lot less space. Um, but, again, you have to make sure you know what's going on. y is equal to 8 into that second equation to try to find z, you'll get partial credit for that. So if you don't know how to get, you're not getting the right answer, yes, obviously, again, if you're an A student and you want to get an A, obviously figure out how to fix that. But if you're okay being a C student, if you're just trying to look to pass, maybe your energy is more spent on knowing how to start the problem. Yeah. Um. Maybe your energy is better spent if you know how to start the problem, if you are given a value and effort and spending more of your time uh, studying the other stuff that's on this test. That's up to you. Who knows? Last but not least, 24. Uh, this one's not actually too bad. Again, let me give myself some space. Um, but this one um, talks about you're hanging out with friends, you're ordering pizza the first weekend. One cheese and one pepperoni and one supreme is thirty-five dollars total. Three pepperoni and is sixty-seven dollars. Pepperoni and three supreme is seventy-seven dollars. All we're doing is setting this up, but even seeing that, it probably, hopefully, it's pretty clear how you can make those equations. Um, obviously, I should be a little harder on the test, but that's how it's going to be on the test. So I have one cheese plus one pepperoni plus one supreme is equal to $35.
We have two cheese, three pepperoni, plus supreme is equal to sixty-seven dollars. The last one per order, I have one cheese plus two pepperoni plus three supreme is equal to seventy-seven dollars. Again, I'm not going to have you solve any of those, but I'm hoping this story problem is easy points. Um, like I said, I didn't pull any tricks. It's, honestly, I'm hoping at this point it's pretty black and white. Where I kind of listed out for one cheese, one pepperoni, one supreme, so five. Two cheese, three pepperoni, one supreme, sixty-seven, and one cheese, two pepperoni, three supreme, seventy-seven. I'm hoping. I mean, again, maybe it's just because I've taken off over two, like roughly thirteen or fourteen times. Um, so for me, that very much sets itself up to a system pretty easily. I'm hoping. Okay. 